The following is a presentation of TFNN. Good morning, markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you get the S&Ps right now. Still in positive territory by about five points, but we got some income data this morning. You get the S&Ps pulling back from the highs. We're up by about five points right now, trading at 45.29. NASDAQ 100, we roll over to the red. A little bit of an acceleration to lower prices from that number at 830. We'll get into that in a moment, but you spike to 15,000. 544. We're just off that level right now with the NASDAQ 100, negative by 12. You have the Dow right now, back above 35,000. You're up by 130 points, 35,087. The Russell right now, positive by two at 1908. We jump to crude, continuing to catch a bid. We're almost at $83 for the price of crude. Right now, you're trading at 82.72, up by a buck 10. You jump over to gold. 1971, down about a dollar, quite an acceleration the last couple of days in the gold contract. Right now, negative by about $2 at 1971. We jump to notes and bonds, been all the focus lately. The big economic data point tomorrow for the week, weekly, uh, excuse me, non-farm payrolls for the month of August today, the final day of August, man. We come into September tomorrow. We come into Labor Day weekend. Pretty remarkable, the summer wrapping up just like that. The 10-year right now, basically flat. We're up by two ticks right now, trading at 110.29. The 30 years up by seven ticks right now. We jump over to the dollar index as we wrap around this market. Quite a little pop, right? You take a look at where we are, considering where we are in yields. You had the dollar index. When I got off the program yesterday, we got a 102 handle. Right, right at the end of the program, we got a 102 handle. That's the last 102 handle we saw for right now. Quite a bit in the dollar. We're up to 103.60. You're up by almost 50 pennies right now in the dollar index. You jump over to the volatility index right now. How about a 13 handle? 13.85 as we come into two days left for summer trading right now. We got a main event tomorrow, though. Normally, Friday before Labor Day weekend, we might get everybody out of the office by Thursday night, but that's not the case this morning, man, uh, as we're going to be here today, and I imagine people are going to be in front of their computers tomorrow until about 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. We get those non-farm payroll numbers. We get wage numbers in there as well. Always important to see what the wages are doing in this inflation inflationary era. Uh, and with that in mind, we jump to some spending. Inflation accelerated in July, according to the Fed's preferred gauge. So this morning, excuse me, we get consumer spending rose 0.8% in July, Commerce Department said this morning, up from a revised 0.6% increase in June. Americans spending more on groceries, recreational goods and vehicles, and on services such as housing, dining out, financial services, and insurance. Adjusted for inflation, consumer spending rose 0.8%. 6% in July. The personal consumption expenditure, that's the Fed's preferred gauge of consumer prices, rose point, excuse me, 3.3% in July from a year earlier versus a 3% gain in June. Core prices, 4.2% in July, in July from a year earlier from a 4.1% in June. You see that number? I mean, pretty much in line with what we're expecting. Economists see core inflation as a better predictor of future inflation uh, from the prior month, July overall, and core prices increased two-tenths of a percent, the same as in June. You check that number out, you put it on a chart, change in consumer spending from January 2020 levels. Check out durable goods, man. Check out durable goods, right? Absolutely remarkable, that number. Uh, so that number comes in this morning, and yeah. I mean, I highlighted it right there, man. Core PCE. I mean, we've we've talked about super core gets talked about sometimes, but core PCE is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, and it is going up in July from where it was in June. And you're talking about numbers that still have a four handle on it, folks. You're supposed to get to a two handle. We're at 4.2. We were at 4.1. That's not the way they want to go. Uh, the market, not too worried about it nonetheless right now. And we go from there, as we will see. All right, we jump around to some of the companies with their numbers. Salesforce, uh, we'll jump around first as we go around. Let's jump around to some of these numbers. You get Salesforce out with their numbers. Strong numbers for Salesforce. 
They accelerate higher last night after the close. They're pushing those highs this morning. You got Salesforce up about 15 bucks. You jump over to the Analyze tab, looking for about an $11 move in either direction. So just larger than that move to the upside if you happen to be directionally correct for Salesforce. As they come out with strong numbers, they beat on revenue, they beat on earnings. Uh, decent quarter for Salesforce, to put it lightly. Adjusted operating margin per fiscal year. How about the margins, man, right? <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Adjusted operating income, a metric most closely watched by analysts, surged 77% year over year to 2.7 billion, 12% ahead of analyst projections. Operating margin of 31.6%, a record high for the 24 year old company. Psh, absolutely remarkable. You're pulling those types of margins when you're talking about adjusted operating income surging 77%, operating margins at 31.6%. Uh, they raised the profit targets last year. And yeah, they got some AI going in there, always helps. They've had some volatility, to put it lightly, man. You back this thing up on a five year. That's some volatility for you, right? 311, down to 120 and change, back to 240. But this morning, we're gonna be open at about 2.30, so you're gonna be pushing those recent highs in July for Salesforce, man. You made it up to 2.38.22, but they got a strong quarter going on, and they are trading higher this morning. How about UBS out there, right? UBS, I mean, look at this chart, right? You talk about a buy at the doldrums of the pandemic. You talk about a buy last year at 14 bucks. You're gonna open this morning at 26.56 as they crush it in the earnings after acquiring uh, their rival over in Switzerland, UBS. Two-thirds of the Credit Suisse Investment Bank are going to shut down is what it's going to be. Um, but, boy, that looks to be a beneficial situation for them. Is this one out? Yeah, that one's out this morning for sure. Yeah, the one-third of UBS does plan to keep is largely made up of mergers and acquisitions and capital markets business as well as some parts of the research function. It will also look to build out capabilities in the areas of trading. It has retained uh, a person familiar with the matter said. Yeah, nonetheless, they crush it, man. And uh, yes, I imagine they will be okay going forward, picking up uh, the pieces of their competitor. All right, let's jump around to the FANG stocks, see how we're trading this morning. You got Amazon shares back to a 10 minute chart. Chopping around, we're barely in the positive at about 135 this morning. You jump over to the big dog Apple shares. Can't hold Apple down, man. Check it out, right? Quite the acceleration in the last couple of days, man. You go from 180 to 187, folks. 180 to 187. I always talk about it. 16 billion shares outstanding. Really went from 180 to 188. So let's do 188. That's an $8 rise. And eight dollars times the sixteen shares there at standing one twenty eight hundred twenty eight billion dollars Apple has added since Tuesday. Did you hear that? That's forty eight hours, folks. One hundred twenty eight billion dollars in market cap Apple has added in the last forty eight hours. Very tough for uh, our human minds to conceive of something like that. But the run is on right now, and it is on the big way. Nvidia shares. That was the highest close ever for NVIDIA yesterday, 492.64. You're trading slightly positive today. You jump over to NVIDIA, that puts them at a market cap of $1.2 trillion for NVIDIA shares. Quite the, quite the price tag. Tesla shares has been a rocket ship recently. Tesla this morning, down slightly. You jump over to Tesla shares, you're talking about a company valued at $812 billion. Remarkable stuff. Stay tuned, folks. we got a lot to talk about. We're coming back with our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network, Fast Market. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up about five points right now, trading at 45.29. NASDAQ 100, barely in the red. You get the Dow up by about 140. To talk about some of the market action this morning, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the Schwab Network with Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at the Schwab Network. They got an outstanding lineup of guests, folks. They usually walk you through three hypothetical trade setups, talking about options, all of them talking about defined risk. Uh, Kevin Hinks, we got a little bit of inflation data this morning in spending. Uh, good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep. The the personal income and outlays number came out at 7.30. A bit concerning areas of the month-over-month -month data was pretty much in line in terms of, but here's, here's the concerns, Tommy, if you look at this inflation data. Year-over-year, -year, uh, PCE price index, moved from 3% to 3.3%. Remember, last month was a big drop in the PCE year-over-year. -year. The core PCE year-over-year -year moved from 4.1% to 4.2%. So looking at year-over-year -year numbers, those two numbers going in the wrong direction. Now, the other concern, personal income, up 02 That's a tenth lighter than expected. Personal consumption expenders, consumer spending, up 08 much stronger than expected. So those are some you know, concerns. I mean, the market isn't moving considerably on that, but the NASDAQ has gone now from positive to negative. The Dow is going to be one of the leaders today because of sales. Is in, that's a smaller sample size, but the E-minis are drifting back towards unchanged. And this day is just getting started, Tommy, with a big big number tomorrow as you know yeah it's kind of cool it's kind of like the appetizer before the main event tomorrow morning man it is interesting though kevin i was checking out this morning uh, a great summation of the numbers as usual man but core pce you got um headline pce i got a chart up here right now i'm reading a journal article just talking about those numbers kevin and you got upticks on that chart for the first time in a while i mean we had an uptick on the headline CPI number from March until April, it looks like. Um, core number, though, maybe beginning of the year, you had a slight uptick. But boy, man, um, Chairman Powell probably sipping that coffee this morning. It's pretty remarkable. You actually have core PCE numbers going back up, and we're still handling, um, dealing with a four-handle. Uh, seems like we're becoming used to a four-handle there. 
Uh, tough to imagine getting back to a two as we're going up, but boy, we got a long way to go. And we found out, you mentioned, Kevin, Salesforce, pretty strong numbers from Salesforce out there, some record margins, I think, um, pushing that stock higher. We know we come into the main event in terms of economic data tomorrow for non-farm payrolls. What do you think of yields, Kevin? is what I wanted to ask you. It's the question everyone's talking about. We talked about it yesterday. You made the great point. We were just at 4.36. We're, we're back near about 4.1%. Um, what are you looking for for yields as we come into that important economic data point tomorrow? We're getting a little bit of a bid up by about two basis points, but quite the move recently in yields right now. Yeah, and even though this no, these uh, inflation data came in a little higher than a month ago, yields are down this morning. It's currently sitting around 4.11%. So yields haven't moved up. The dollar is higher today. That will slowly but surely work against stocks. And it's interesting, Tommy, that the dollar is higher because some of the European did, if you saw very early this morning, some came in a little stronger than expected. Where's the ones that jump out at me? France, CPI went from 0.1%. Uh, a month ago, to up one full percent. Their year over year went from 4.3 to 4.8 in their CPI. Uh, Eurozone unemployment, 6.4 percent. Eurozone, they harmonized. So the Eurozone still got a problem, yet the, our dollar is rallying on, on that. I think that's kind of interesting. Maybe that th they think that. This is not good progress against inflation, and maybe the Fed that some of the, some were starting to discount that the Fed could be done. Maybe that's not as sure as it was a day or two ago. It's pretty remarkable how quickly things can change in terms of people's minds. The market yields, uh, the dollar. Great point. I had the dollar up, huge move in the dollar from where we were yesterday, and you got yields just chopping around right now, especially on that ten year. Uh, we're coming into the end of earnings, man. We're coming into Labor Day weekend, but we're all kind of hanging out at least until tomorrow morning for that non-farm payroll number. Do you guys have any equities you're coming up talking about on Fast Market today at 12, Kevin? Sure. Some more earnings today. Uh, Lululemon coming out with earnings after the bell. Like Foley will do a presentation on Lululemon and their data. Broadcom, AVGO coming out with earnings. We'll cover them in the first segment. And then uh, a stock w w with some news out this morning, Palantir. So we'll, we'll trade some Palantir in the final segment. So Broadcom, Lululemon, Palantir today. Three great stocks, man. Um, and boy, that Broadcom chart, all these tech stocks, that is quite a chart, man. Come into the pandemic at about 300. Uh, you come into the beginning of this year at about 567, and you're trading at 892. Well, Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, on a busy morning, man. We don't talk to you tomorrow, so have a great Friday. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and uh, I can't wait to find out where this market is when I talk to you next Tuesday, man, as things move pretty quickly right now. But, Kevin, we'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, man, and you have a great weekend. Thanks for having me, Tommy. Have a great weekend. Always a pleasure, you too. Folks, tune in every trading day from the Schwab Network, Fast Market, right here on Tiger TV with your man, Kevin Hinks, uh, his co-host, Tom White, an outstanding lineup of guests they walk you through. Three setups every single day, folks, all of them use defined risk. I've learned so much myself over the years watching Kevin as they walk you through those hypothetical trade setups, and that's three great stocks, man. And look at that chart of AGV, AVGO Broadcom. Uh, Lululemon was on quite a tear. We've been chopping around for a bit. You put this thing a little bit longer term. You run from about 50 bucks up to 500 almost over a period of time, but we pull back a bit and check it out, right? From the pandemic low, where do we pull back? You gotta love those Fibonacci numbers, right to the 618. They don't work every time, folks. Um, but boy, there is something about those Fibonacci numbers in the way that our lives work. Uh, they just show up everywhere. Learned a bunch from our man Larry Pesavento on that accord as well. All right, markets, S&Ps up by four. There's a longer term chart for you, man. Right. There's the longer term chart. You want to see a little bit of a uh, wall of worry. 665 up to 4800 and we get back the pullback like nothing, man. Uh, be careful in this market, folks. We got some astronomical multiples we're dealing with right now. The chief culprit of that. I mean, we've all seen them, right? Let's take that one off, first of all. As in, folks, we're looking a little bit parabolic here, okay? We have not had a negative month this year for NVIDIA, and we've had some mammoth green months in that time frame. That's eight straight months of gains for NVIDIA shares, going from 150 up to 500. And this thing was not even cheap on the multiples back at 150, folks.
okay? Not even cheap. I think I saw something recently. I'll try to find it. I think if you, oh, I got to find the exact number. I'll find it. I mean, this stock, check this out, right? You go back to when this thing went public. Where's my lung? In 2000, yeah, 1999. I mean, this has got to be split adjusted, right? But even if you go into, you're still at five bucks in 2015. Okay, still at five bucks in 2015, man. And uh, that's a hundred bagger over the course of eight years for that equity. Multiples to the upside of something like if you put 10 grand into NVIDIA when they went public, you got like 300 million or something bonkers. I guess we can do the simple math by multiplying it. I'll pull that up. Uh, but boy, you know, you don't have to be a market master technician, folks, to look at this chart and say, ah, I might be a little careful here. We just traded from 100 to 500. Uh, optimism at all time highs, but rightfully so to a certain degree. AI taking over. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off, uh, excuse me, up by about four points. You have the NASDAQ 100 making it back into positive territory for the open right now. You're positive by five. You get the Dow up by 123. As Kevin mentioned, Salesforce is going to give that Dow a lift when you're up by 6% right now. A $13 lift for their shares. I mentioned the $13 because uh, 
The Dow Jones Industrial Average is a price-weighted index, which makes zero sense, as we've said before. But nonetheless, you are trading up by about 13 bucks, 6%. That's going to put a lift in the Dow. As you get the Dow right now up by about a third of a percent, and all the other indices up by about one-tenth of a percent, the Russell catches a bid back into positive territory. Crude hanging at about $82.75 right now, and you get the gold contract down about $3 to 1970 If you missed it, folks, my dad did an outstanding webinar for Gold Report subscribers last night from 4 till 5 p.m. Eastern time. We had a great crowd in there uh, for that webinar. That webinar is archived, folks. If you're thinking about signing up for the Gold Report, outstanding time to do it. It's not too late. You can get in there, sign up for the Gold Report. You gain instant access to the newsletter. Tom's got new issues out every Monday. I think he's got four active positions in there for gold equities and silver equities right now in the Gold Report. And then you'll gain access to that archive. You can check it out this weekend uh, for the Labor Day weekend. You can check it out whenever you want for the, your subscription. Uh, and for you current subscribers up there, that archive will be up shortly this morning for the Gold Report. Uh, all right, let's check out some of the FANG stocks as we open the markets and we catch a little bit of a lift. Amazon, what do they like? They like that consumer spending potentially. Amazon catches a lift up by eight tenths. Look at that pop man on the open. They just popped a dollar. Can't hold this market down. NASDAQ 100 now up 35 points. Apple catches a little bit of a lift right now. 188.34, you jump to Microsoft shares. Everything catching a lift. Can't hold this market down. Google shares this morning up by half a percent. Tesla shares catching a bit as well. NVIDIA as we've been talking about, up by about a third of percent as well. The march to higher prices continues. All right, a couple other stories I got pulled up here. This one from the journal. You got some IPOs coming to market. Arm, Instacart, Clavio, not familiar with that one. Prep for their IPOs, I am familiar with Instacart. The reason why this caught my eye, uh, I used Instacart so much during the pandemic, folks. I had uh, a lot going on. You have young kids in the house. Tommy was on the way. So we wanted to keep the germs to a minimum, especially at the beginning of the pandemic. You really didn't know what's going on. Avoided the grocery store to a certain degree. Why not? Very busy at that time. Time is a commodity like nothing else. So I was able to save time. Inflation had not reared its ugly face just yet. And so I was more willing to pay a premium when inflation had not risen. I mean, think about the, pre the premiums we're paying right now, right? Prices up about 20 to 25%. That's what I was paying for an Instacart order two and a half years ago to get dropped off at my door. I'm not willing to pay those prices anymore, okay? Now, there are differences here. I've went over them before, but be careful in certain equities, folks, where some of it is a luxury and some of it is a necessity, okay? Instacart, in many situations, is a luxury, Sometimes it's a necessity, don't get me wrong, okay? But many times it's a luxury in that you're trading your time for some amount of money, basically. You are paying for that service and most of the time you're paying for your time, okay? If you really need that money, you might be able to make the time to go to the grocery store yourself, but it's worth it as a luxury to pay for that time, have somebody shop, get it dropped off and you make use of that time. I mean, you know, if you're working 10 hour days, folks, you get home at six o'clock, right? It's not worth it for you to go grocery shopping and add another hour or two, maybe whatever it is, okay? Versus a necessity, and the easiest way to understand necessity, the way I think about it, is something like Uber, okay? It's not a luxury when you take an Uber to the airport. It's a necessity, right? It's not a luxury when you take an Uber home from a night out having a few cocktails. That's a necessity, OK, there are differences. And the reason why I bring it up is because I've stopped using Instacart completely. I mean, folks, I probably spent 10 grand, 15 grand over the course of a year or two. Right. Easy. You're talking about, you know, every order, 300 bucks easy on Instacart. OK, these are big orders. We're doing maybe once a week, something like that. You load up. Then you got the fees on top of it. You got a tip on top of it. Right. You're talking about 300 bucks easy. Well, that's only 30 orders, folks, get you to 10 grand, okay? So you see losing one customer, how much that can matter to the revenue number. Now, Instacart is not taking in all that revenue, right? They're taking it in, they're passing it off to, whether it's Publix, I was using a lot for Publix. But what I've noticed recently, this is the last part of the story, is that I've been getting a lot of notifications on my phone from Instacart, and they've been plowing me with coupons to try and get me back. And they've been some pretty substantial coupons. I think one was save $30 off my next two orders of at least $75 or something like that. 
that's a pretty good deal. Now, here's the, the kicker here is that you're really not saving money versus going to the store by doing that, but you're actually not spending more money if you keep the order in check. As in, they're actually just saying, we'll kind of save you all the fees. You know, if you do an order for 100 bucks, we'll give you 30 bucks off, and that's kind of what you're paying sometimes. 20 to 30% in my head is what you're paying for an order on Instacart, because once you add up that each good is more money, then you have a service fee on top of it, and you better be tipping those people, folks, okay? Because they're not the billionaires that own Instacart. Most of the people running around making those orders, you should be tipping them, okay? Point being, be careful on these, okay? Because many times companies come into their IPO, right? They want to make sure their numbers look as pristine as possible. I've been getting many, many coupons on my phone, and that's not going to translate to profits for them. It's going to translate to revenue, okay? Not profit. So be careful there. And my personal preference, and these are all wildly different companies here, Arm, Instacart, and I'm not even familiar with Clavio. Maybe somebody can help me out in the den in terms of what they do. But I am familiar with Instacart. I was a great customer for them for a year or two, and I have not had an Instacart order probably in a year or two, which is pretty remarkable how quickly that thing goes. Now, what they talk about in this article, man, is that they're not um, they're 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 finding plenty of suitors in terms in terms of people who are getting into those shares even prior to the IPO. Instacart has lined up large investors, including Nord, Nord's Bank, Sequoia Capital, Valiant Capital, to buy up $400 million in stock in its IPO, the company revealed in a filing last week. That's going to be about half or more of the total shares sold in the offering. So there's believers out there. You got, you know, you got big money buying into these. You got Pepsi separately agreeing to purchase 175 million in Instacart's convertible preferred stock in a concurrent private plan, excuse me, in a concurrent private placement to its IPO, according to that filing. So Pepsi, they're getting in on the action. Um, Clavio's and talks with possible financial anchor investors for its offering. So they're trying to bring in anchors, right? You're bringing in big time capital money that maybe takes up about half of that. And it used to be more common for companies to float at least 10% in the IPOs, but both Clavio and Instacart are planning to sell less than 10% of their total shares. So there's a little bit going on here. We'll talk about this more when we get back um, from the break, but keep your eye on these ones because it's gonna be interesting how they go in terms of the IPOs, right? You're simulate, selling small pieces of the company, and even in selling small pieces in the company, okay, you're lining up private capital investors. Seems like you might be a little bit worried pushing out the normal amount to the public, right? You used to push out at least 10% and you'd push it out to the public. Now they're pushing less than 10% out and maybe half of that number they're pushing into private capital. And uh, yeah, and remember that folks, we have a gig economy, but remember that conversation, the gig economy. And remember whether it's a luxury or a necessity because necessities are here to stay. Luxuries, you better be willing to pay for that price. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be you right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 
bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got AMC shares up about 5.2%. You caught quite a run yesterday. And was this the news yesterday? I did not see this. But uh, yeah, Taylor Swift, I guess, huh? Is the deal there. Oh, that's not it. Here it is. Is this yesterday? No. Yeah, it must have been. Huh? AMC plans at least four showings a day over the weekends as Taylor Swift announces an Eras tour film and AMC shares soar. Uh, quite the tour, man. The tour does not end when the tour ends. Guess what? It goes to the movie theaters and AMC likes that. Um, yeah, she's going to be in North America cinemas starting when? Like 30 days, man. you got to love it. The Eras tour has been the most meaningful electric experience in my life. I mean, how much, how much press has this tour gotten? Rightfully so, man. I think they've taken in a billion dollars. Now they're going to have a movie on top of it. Um, I agree, Duffy. Quite the businesswoman indeed, man. She is just crushing it, rightfully so. And and she deserves it, man, because she's got uh, her Swifties, right? Yeah, and the tour is expected to gross a billion dollars. And she's set to take that tour to South America at the end of the year before heading to Europe and Asia in February of 2020. For quite the number. Uh, be careful for AMC shares out there, though, folks. Check out that chart. OK, I found it amusing that the headline of this chart is AMC shares soar. Do you see that chart? That's the chart. Do you see any soaring? I don't see any soaring on that chart. Be careful, folks. OK, you're up from 10 to 13. This thing just dropped from 60 bucks. Uh, irresponsible reporting. I would say, to put that headline. But guess what? You get Taylor Swift in the headline. You get AMC shares. You put soaring. You get the Eras tour. That is some clickbait for you. Uh, I don't see any soaring in that. Yes, you're up by 3%. Yeah, you were up by what? 20 or 30% yesterday. But folks, last week we dropped from 40 to 10. So be careful on this equity, to put it lightly. All right. What else are we going to talk about uh, we're going to talk a little hospitals, man. Interesting article from Bloomberg out there this morning. I was reading this. Is it this morning? It is this morning. I was reading it this morning. And it's just a buyer beware story, folks. I've had a few surgeries myself. Thankfully, um, they've all gone well. You never want to go through surgery if you don't have to, folks. I've had a new, few neurosurgeries. Uh, I've, had a small, I had, I, I've had small issues with my back. And for some reason, I have a rare thing where I had a couple tumors, nothing to do with cancer or anything like that. You just got to go in, get them out, and I'm all better, right? But because they're on your spine, right on the nervous system in your spine, you're best suited to have a neurosurgeon 
it, folks, if you ever have anybody touching anything to do with your spine or your brain, make sure you see a neurosurgeon, okay? Because I gave you a quick history. My history was I had some pain. I went and saw a doctor. They found a small little thing. He said, oh, we're going to get you looked at an orthopedic. I go see the orthopedic. The orthopedic, great orthopedic. I think this was up in Milton, Massachusetts at the time. All right, don't remember the guy's name. But he says to me, no problem. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's anything serious like cancer. We'll probably go in, get it out. It's just a little cyst that's grown. I said, oh, okay, that's great. I'm up there in Boston at the time, you know, I'm talking to my family. Not ideal, scary times. Okay, for sure. I was only about 24 at the time when this happened. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go um, get a second opinion from from one of these beautiful hospitals that we got, Brigham and Women's, all these stuff. So I went to the, I think it was the Spinal Center in the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And I remember that day clearly because I met a neurosurgeon there and he told me, right, I can't believe that orthopedic surgeon said he could do this. Can't believe it, man. There's no way he is trained as an orthopedic surgeon to be going in there and doing complex spinal surgery. So just be careful, number one, when you deal with anybody. Always get second opinions and get a third opinion, okay, folks? Because any time that you're doing surgeries, and the bummer of this is, is that many times in the medical industry, there are severe conflicts of interest, okay? Severe. Exactly, Basil. Basil, nothing is ever a small one. Severe conflicts of interest, okay? And this doesn't mean somebody's a bad person. doesn't mean they're a bad doctor. And the line gets gray in terms of where you go over that, okay? But doctors are just people. They can make mistakes. They're just humans. There's a thing called human error, and it's always going to exist. Now, the conflict of interest is that's a mammoth surgery, man, and that orthopedic surgeon is probably going to get paid to a certain degree, right? So you have people recommending services for you that impact their take-home pay for their family, number one, okay? Number two... I've gone from there. So then I come down to Florida, okay? And unfortunately, I had another one, okay? And they pop up, but again, very simple surgery if you find the right person that can do it. And it's not simple. I'm in the hospital for maybe a day or two sometimes, and thankfully, they're all gone, okay? Um, and it's just a rare thing that they somehow popped up. Again, nothing to do with cancer, but they grow in your nerve cells. They're called schwannomas, if you ever want to look them up, folks, okay? Uh, very rare for some reason, but I'm giving you some advice here because experience is everything and you think you know everything folks so what happens is i come down to florida uh found an outstanding surgeon um if you're looking for an outstanding neurosurgeon folks and you're in the boca area frank vrionis okay this guy runs the boca raton um i gotta find neurosurgery neuro neurosurgery center at the boca raton regional hospital frank vrionis v-r-i-o NIS, I think, outstanding. He used to work at Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, which is how I find him. Now, I'll tell you this whole story, all right? And we're digressing, but this might be the most important thing you hear of this program, okay? So I get a surgery done from this guy 10 years ago, 15 years ago, something like that when I first come down to Florida. He moves to Boca, okay? So another one pops up. I got to get another one. And I go to Moffitt, and I go to the guy that's behind him that's taken over, right? Probably an outstanding neurosurgeon in his own right. He's got a great position at Moffitt Cancer Center. So obviously he has some experience to get that position. And long story short, I was not happy with how he talked to me. His general um, prognosis would be the word, right? So you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna track down Vrionis. Now, Vrionis had moved from Moffitt all the way over to Boca, I checked it out. He's still taking patients. Boca's only a three-hour ride. I said, this is important enough to drive three hours. I drive to um, Vrionis, and bottom line is Vrionis took care of me, okay? So just get your second and third opinions. And now what this story talks about, which is the last part I really want to get to here, is that you got surgeons double and triple booking procedures that residents perform. And I remember one of the things I always asked, right, is I said to Vrionis and other ones, I said, are you going to be the person that is – literally doing every single thing on me. Like, are you going to be the one that is cutting? Are you going to be the one that is extracting? Are you going to be the one in that room doing this? Or are you going to be delegating this to somebody else that you're training? He said, no, no, no. I'm going to be the only person that is touching you with anything to do with cutting the procedure or anything. Okay. Ask the questions, folks. Okay. Because so many times, and this is, a, this is quite an article, man. Okay. Is that Surgeons are double and tripping procedures, and you have some of the biggest doctors in these hospitals, okay, are the ones that are providing the whistleblowing here. In Tennessee, the former head of One Health System's orthopedic surgery unit and two colleagues filed claims, okay, basically 
saying that hospitals are just basically double booking, triple booking. And then what happens is, is that they hand it off to the residents at the time when they have to jump to the next one. OK, so ask the questions and don't be afraid to ask the questions, folks. OK, don't be afraid to offend somebody and, and pin them down, because I'm telling you, um, they're just humans and avoid surgery. This is the last part. And we'll talk Mark, and we get avoid surgery at all costs. I've had a shoulder surgery as well. I've gotten a car accident. Um, it never gets back to 100 percent, folks. Never. I had a tear. They did it. I'm feeling good. Never gets back to 100 percent. Don't get a surgery. It make it a last resort if you can and ask those tough questions. Make sure they're not leaving the room like in this article. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the market in positive territory right now. You got crude up to 82.75 right now. Higher prices on crude. Gold contract at about 1970 right now. We check over to yields real quick. The 10-year chopping around. We're sitting at about 4.1 percent. We check out the dollar index as we wrap up the hour. Wrap up the hour right now. Continued strength in the dollar index at 103.67. And uh, yeah, we got some feedback in the den, man. And it's great information, folks, because. Not a lot of people have gone through where you have multiple surgeries. You get to see people in different deals. Um, and what this article alleges, okay, and this is where you just want to ask the questions. You want to know, 
uh, and they talk about this Angler Health System. I'm not familiar myself, okay? But concurrent surgeries and double billing have been going on for years. Um, you got settlements at Mass General, okay? Elevated the issue, so Mass General, right in there. One of the great hospitals in Massachusetts in there. But what they talk about is that surgeons are encouraged sometimes to delegate power, but they're just leaving the rooms. They go to other floors. They even go to other hospitals. They delegate it to the residents, okay? Angler, the nation's seventh largest teaching hospital, performed at least 8,500 overlapping or concurrent surgeries in less than four years. So ask your doctor, are you overlapping surgeries, right? Are you running concurrent surgeries where you are that lead surgeon and the same surgeon is running multiple concurrent surgeries, okay? And I'll give you a quick last example of always seek out second and third opinions, folks, because let's see, let me tell you, if you've never been to Mo Moffitt Cancer Center, folks, in Tampa, it is quite a compound. You walk in there kind of in awe in terms of the place you're in, and it gives you the impression that everybody knows what they're talking about. And I'm gonna finish this quick, but that surgeon I saw that replaced Vrionis at Moffitt, I'll tell you, so I had pain in my leg from one of these, and I had one actually behind my knee, and I knew it was called a schwannoma. And I said, I want you to take it out. And he said, well, it's on a nerve. He said, um, there's, a, there's a risk that you might never be able to walk again if I hit that nerve wrong. So I want to make sure that, that that's a last resort. And I already knew it had to, okay? So I left that day saying, man, I got to make a decision where I either live with this pain forever or potentially never walk. I went and saw Vrionis like I told you about. Vrionis says, no problem, man. That's not even the deal. He says, worst case scenario, we can take a nerve out from another area of your body, fix everything, you'll be fine. So doctors tell you things that they want you to use to make decisions. That first doctor didn't want to do the surgery. I wish I had more time, folks. Thank you for your time. Stay tuned. Our man Basil Chapman's up next, folks. Have a great Thursday. We'll talk to you.